Uh, today I have Jack here. I yeah, <laughs> sucked him into doing Facebook, Facebook lives now. <laughs> <laughs> something he thought he would never ever do. Yes. Um, we're going to get into some things today. We're going to give you some updates on the fair. We're also going to talk a little bit about our YouTube channel and what's been going on there. Then we are going to talk about a common theme that we see with just about everything. We've been doing some group coaching yeah. and yeah. we it, it's all all about taking the time it takes. So we're going to get into that as well. So I hope you stick around and we'll delve into some of these topics. I think to start with, I'm going to take it to Jack here. Yeah. And in his inaugural uh, Facebook right. Live. Yeah. Hi, Karen. Karen Jones is on. <laughs> Hello. Uh, um, yeah. So we've been working hard and the YouTube channel is growing. And it, it in the beginning, we weren't putting all of our focus on the YouTube channel because we had so many things going on with affairs and our courses and things. And then recently we hit our thousand subscriber mark and now the YouTube channel is really growing. So I think we got 200 subs in a few days, which was pretty it, crazy uh, for it, us. It was a little bit, you right. know, a little bit of subs here, a little bit oh, of subs there. It was, and in the beginning it was like, we worked really hard. We do a video and get maybe one or two subs. Yeah. And I mean, you're it's talking like to, to yes, to make a video. I mean, not even filming the video, just editing videos can take easily a few hours. It depends on what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And she's also got me <laughs> editing videos too. Yeah. So I think that's a good, I don't know. If so this a, horse guy is now going to be a tech savvy guy. <laughs> yeah. Apparently. Yeah. Apparently in the beginning we were trying to fight uh, Facebook and technology and, but you know, and then we realized something we can communicate with many more like-minded people like ourselves. Yeah, so which part, is so cool. Part was excellent. The community part is so so neat because we're in an age where we can spread the message about good quality horse care across the globe and reach people that we never would have imagined we could reach. Exactly. And on our YouTube channel, it's not just us. It's interviews with like top equine professionals. It's interviews. It's other um, training, instructional videos, you name it. So we've yeah. got it on our YouTube channel, and we don't want the YouTube It's Art of the Horseman YouTube. <laughs> show. Show. And the reason we added show is so people realize it's 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 not just us. It's, it's other presenters. It's other presenters. Which I'm and sure it, you appreciate. You know, going to the fact of the YouTube channel growing so slowly. Right. It's kind of like horses and the the horsemanship and how that all works. And it's like you start out slow with your horses, and it feels like you're not getting very far. And there's a learning curve. And there's this huge right. learning curve, yeah. And you're kind of like experimenting and you're doing things right. and you're trying things out and you're not sure if it's going to work. And, and you're frustrated. And you get frustrated yeah. <laughs> at times, right? And then at times you're like, yeah, something you know happened that was exciting and you got a lot done. Right. And But then you hit a point where it's like the snowball and – it starts small, right? And you're just like rolling this little, we're from the Midwest in the United States here, so we deal with snow. Right. So we get the snowball thing, but you start with a small snowball and as you roll it in the snow, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it grows more and more and more. And it's almost like this exponential increase in what is, what's happening. Uh, and this this is with our horses it happens right and apparently it happens on YouTube as well because... yeah you gain momentum and and yeah. also we live in a time where when we don't understand something we can look it up I mean, the information is at our fingertips now so that is that is another advantage to, to technology so if you have issues with horses you can come to the YouTube channel there's Courses. There's other people's work. There's there's, there's are the horsemen online are the fair. Horsemen online fair. But <laughs> the point is, is that if we ran into hiccups, which we ran into thousands of hiccups, yes, we could look it up. Look it up. So there really Trouble isn't shoot. there really isn't excuses anymore for not being able to get something done or figuring figuring something out, right? Right. Because right. The, and I keep hearing people say, you know, I don't know how you do this. I'm not techie, and I keep saying Paul is not techie either, or wasn't techie, <laughs> but she was willing to learn. She's willing to take the time to take yeah. that it, that it would take to learn how to do this. So that's cool. So anyway, it's pretty yeah. important. So yeah, and and speaking of that, so right now we live in an age where everything's at our fingertips, right? And leave a comment if you can hear, just because I had somebody say the audio is malfunctioning uh -oh. on his end. So I hope you can all hear us. Um, 
but it, it, everything's instant and horses aren't instant, right? right? Horses require a lot of time. And, and initially it's things do move slowly because there's a relationship that needs to be formed. There's a yes. partnership that needs to grow and you need to allow the time to have that opportunity for that to, to flourish and to grow. And then once you have that relationship and you have that partnership, taking it somewhere is really easy. It's so much easier. Right. So I'm hoping. Ask I, Di I, Diana. If she. Diana. Oh, Diana can hear. Can hear. Good. Thank you, Diana. Um, and then welcome and to Rachel and Charles. Hello. And not forcing a relationship. So when people think training their horse. I'm going to go train my horse. I'm going to be repetitive and I'm going to be consistent and have a regimen. Mm -hmm. And is that a relationship or is that just your ideas forced on the, on the horse? Right. And so the relationship takes time and then you start to trust and there might yeah. be some leadership aspects and some response aspects where the horse responds to us. But like you said, once we, once we get, have that foundation, that relationship established, now our horse believes us to go into the next unknown situation. Right. So I can't possibly train a horse for every situation it's going to encounter. Right. But I can hopefully have a relationship in which my horse. And, and something I've always loved that, that you've, you've said is you say, I don't train my horses. We have life experiences together. Yes. And I think that's something that is so important when you're working with your horses to realize that you're creating these life experiences. You're, you're creating scenarios and situations that can lead you to a path of wonderful life experiences or not so wonderful life experiences. Exactly. And that reminds me of like um, the gal that was, she had a really nervous horse. We, we just had a coaching call. She had a really nervous horse that was uh, very distracted, upset, horse that's very new to her. Mm -hmm. She hasn't had the horse real long. And she's like, I don't even know where to start. What am I supposed to do with this? And our answer was take it slow, right? right? right. Go into the horse's paddock and just be a horse with them is what Jax said. Yeah. What would other horses do with that horse? Yeah, right? live with go live with your horse. And you yeah. you'd be surprised. But do you have the do you have the time that, that takes to do that? That's important. Right. You might think, well, I've got an hour, I need to get to the barn, I want to work on cantering, so I'm going to get on my horse, and you're going to do all these things, and you're forcing it. Stop doing that, because it's it's really not helping the horse any. You might just be doing it for yourself, but that's not what a relationship's about. So, yeah. take, so take that horse into account, but take time. And most questions that we get from people is, it comes back to, were you ready? Did you take enough time or did you, did you get it in over your head? Which is a similar thing yep. because now you're doing something prematurely. You're not ready to do. You didn't take the time that it took. And so now you, you got in over your head and now you're nervous. Your horse is nervous. And now that is part of your experience together. Right. So it is really about experiences and making those experiences positive. It took me a long time to get to that to that point. But I mean, even training horses, I'll get training horses and, and I'll take things pretty slow and I'll tell people, I'll say, yeah, I, you know, um, observed your horse. I put your horse in my round pen and I went and worked with other horses and I walked back and forth and watched your horse and I observed how your horse did. And then I slowly went into the round pen, worked with it a little bit and left and go in and groom. And, and so that this isn't this bombardment of you need to, mm -hmm. you need to do, and you know, leading them around by their head and tying them up and riding them. And I don't know when you really think about it from the horse's perspective, you know, how much say do, you, do, do they have? Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. And that's, you know, that, that's so important when you talked about observing your horse, because I think how, how often do we go to our horses and ask them, what are you interested in doing today? What, what are the things that are important to you? And those are things that if you're in any relationship, it's a give and take, right? I, I do what Jack wants to do some of the times and he does some things that I'd like to do, right? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then there's times no, when we true, do things right. together yeah, yeah. and we, there are things that right. we enjoy. So, so you need to ask your horse and you need to find the things that are, are interesting and exciting for your horse and you need to do those, even if they don't maybe fit your plans exactly. Because it's again like that snowball we talked about with our YouTube channel. Same thing with your horse. Right, exactly. If you get that core snowball going, it just builds and it 
become so amazing after that. And yeah, definitely. So, and then accepting what are we really ready to do? You know, so I've got an instructor, let's say, and they want me to jump and I have a show that I need to get to in three months. And all of a sudden we start putting these deadlines on and your priorities change. And you mm -hmm. might find that it goes from a relationship to this uh, sort of a human goal based um, to where all of yeah. a sudden I've got these benchmarks I need to get to, but what about your horse? Yeah. And so all of a sudden, you know, people have horses that go lame. Yeah, because their horse is tense and nervous, and it's hard. They're hard on themselves physically, and mentally. Yep. And uh, people have bad experiences. People go to shows. They start. They fall off at a show. Yeah, yeah. I, I was um, I was recently at a at a conference, and there was a vet talking about lameness, and she didn't have time to get into this, but it's something that I think comes up with lameness so much is when you're working with a horse that's not emotionally in a state that is relaxed, interested, engaged in what you're doing, you're going to see a lot more in lamenesses, in um, behaviors that you don't want because of the horse's emotional state. And I think people don't necessarily realize that when they set these deadlines and their horse is not emotionally prepared and you start stacking the pressure on and you create a more nervous, more tense, maybe slightly defensive horse, you will start seeing repercussions yes. within the horse's body because the mind and body are they're so connected. They are. The, the body follows that the mind. It does. And so, I mean, it, but I, that's that's a hard thing to convince people to do is, yeah. is, is slow down. But look what horses do with each other. They have all the time in the world. They do with each other and then all of a sudden we come into their environments and we have all these expectations and so mm -hmm. it's 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 also it just can't be forced either yeah. so in the yeah. in the beginning things can take can be a little bit hard and and you need to you know go go to go get lessons or go youtube or go to the fair or whatever and get started on a path but get started yeah get started and get rolling and things will start to develop and, and progress and, and build yeah, and be okay with not, you know, not having a precise timeline. Right. Let things take a natural evolution. Right. And you'll be a lot more satisfied with how things go. Right. And you're going to get to where you wanted to get to in the end faster anyway. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And what about our new fair? Yeah. We need so to talk about that. We are working on the 2020 uh, fair. Right. Coming, coming up soon. And we're spring. actually, we're getting contacted by a lot of people that would yeah. like to present. So that's real. So we're becoming more and more known that's and it's, it's really exciting. So we've had people from all over contact us and say, how can we, how can I get involved with this fair? Yeah. How can I be a part? Exactly. And we have a, a surprise instructor that's going to be training. I'm just firming up the deal details with her, Right. but she's somebody that we had batch listened to. Oh, she had an audio yes, series yes. that we completely wore the CDs out because we listened to it all you the time. You can wear a CD out? Well, we scratched no, them up. No, it was in our truck, that, and right, yeah. no. we're horse oh, people. Yeah, as we would go. <laughs> yeah, as we as we would yes, go and teach clinics around. or go yeah. to shows and stuff, they would get no, scratched we, up. We we really looked up to her a lot, and I would say she was a huge influence on our philosophy. And you know, listening to the audio series, yeah, I never really, I never imagined that we would, you know, have an event. And have a possibility of having her yes, in it. Yes, yes, <laughs> and it's, it's pretty cool. She's a pretty cool person, I think. Yeah, yeah, so we're really excited about that. We're going to hopefully be announcing that in the next month or so. Right, right. Um, and then what about the adoption and that situation? Oh, yeah, so then we're also looking at – now, we've given the fair to – I need to tally it up – quite quite a lot of horse rescues uh, just as a resource for them so that they're – able to go themselves, you know, the owners of the rescues train themselves, but they can also have some of their staff and employees go and go through the trainings and see what's out there so that it improves their horsemanship because it's really hard, I'm sure, for these people mm -hmm. that have rescues is, yeah. to break away, get to a clinic, go to a horse expo, and they need the education just like the rest of us. Um, so, so we've donated the fare to them, but we also... Um, we want to know like how we could help even, or we, we were wondering how we could help even more. Mm -hmm. And what we are going to be doing for the 2020 fair is we're actually going to be donating um, 
think we said 50 percent huh yes 50 percent of our, of our, our proceeds right. um or profit profit right. from the fair right to we're, back to back to a horse rescue right. exactly. and we're looking for suggestions as to what what rescues what rescues and we've had people email us ideas but we'd like yep. to have more ideas and possibly so, be be able to get some video footage um hear their story yeah and what are they um going through and what would help and and we all need to hopefully give back to the horse right yeah because that's that's why we're here right now right because of horses and yeah. it's it so anyway that's what we would really like to do and we feel we wanted to make a difference yeah and we're hoping this makes a difference so so if you know of any horse rescues that you think would be great right let them know right tell them they can get in contact with us with if they're the art of the horsemen, interested right yeah. the art of the horsemen um and then and they can just message our facebook page that's just fine and then we'll have them submit some video tell us a little bit about their story so we can get a good feel for what their needs are and what their organization is about and then go from there exactly um, right yeah so i think that's that's everything yeah but, i think that pretty much yeah. pretty much sums it up and i we appreciate the community the community Definitely. in our facebook group is growing i'm seeing so much amazing interaction i have not jumped in there in a long time because um i've just been so busy with other things yes uh but it's so nice to see all of the positive interactions great comments people helping one another out people sharing their stories so we really appreciate the community. And if you're not in the Because of the Horse Horse Fair Facebook group, uh, look it up, come join in and, yeah. and uh, join the discussion because there's some, some good stuff going on there. There's great there. stuff going on there. And I talk yeah. to people every day who are seeing everything and seeing all of our work and we're getting great feedback, but we would, we would definitely appreciate your feedback as well. And yeah. even when it comes to videos, our YouTube channel, um, do you have ideas for presenters that you would like us to contact? I mean, I think, I think we've contacted every horse professional in the world. No, I was kidding, no. but we've contacted a lot of people, <laughs> yeah. but there's always great ideas that come up. And, you know, I got a call yesterday from a person, very interesting, man, it'd be great to have more, more feedback from you all in regards to presenters. And if you think, yeah. or, or if you, you know, if there's any, because even if we can't get them for the 2020 right. event, there's all those future events. There is going to be an annual thing. So, and farriers, vets, yeah, you name it. Yeah. We good, good natural vets, um, farriers, Feldenkrais workers. Mm -hmm. We've got, um, a gal that might be joining in, uh, in the next fair. That's that, um, yoga for riders, Definitely. all of these, all of these pieces that play a really important role in, in horses and horseback riding. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. We'd like to hear your, your yeah. feedback. So anyway, well, we appreciate you all. Thank you very much. I'm sure we're going to be yeah. hopping on here more, yeah. more often again. Yeah. So you're, you might get to, I don't know, yep. see us a little bit more and yeah, she roped me into doing a Facebook live. So yeah. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But, all right. So, Thanks bye, everyone.